Okay, what we're going to look at today is a recreation done by a professional forensics recreation artist on this mummy. This mummy is known as the Barnum Museum mummy because it's been kept at the P.T. Barnum Museum where a lot of his exhibits from his old freak show type of thing are still on exhibit to this day. There's been some problems there too lately and some damage or so on, but let's not get into that with that, this. Let's just look at this. This is a Egyptian mummy, approximately 4,000 years old. Well, it looks like 38 or so or something. And it's been wrapped and not totally unwrapped whenever it was originally looked at. This mummy was donated to the museum by P.T. Barnum's wife, apparently. And so there's a little bit of a history to it as it comes down. But you can see the wrapping is actually still adhered or fused to the face over her right eye and so on and around the head, caught on the part of the shoulder of the chest over there on the left and so on but they were able to get it unwrapped quite a bit and it has its arms clasped and it was touted as being an egyptian priestess so somebody of high order and with the arms crossed like that that kind of makes some sense so a few other pictures of this but this has been on exhibit for a long time people Apparently, she donated it in like 1896, and therefore, it's pretty much been on exhibit the whole time here. It's been one of the things like, oh, you can look at this, look at that. Sure, there are some strange things like uh, the Fiji mermaid, where they took a monkey and attached it to a fish. Or there's an actual centaur that's there where they took a man at the hips off and attached it to a horse where its neck was. And it was supposed to have been proof that there might be have been centaurs and so on like that. But this is just a real mummy from back in the day when there used to be a, a large amount of trade of mummies coming out and unwrapping parties and things like that of uh, Caucasians in the past middle ages time and into the time we're talking about so it's probably exactly where P.T. Barnum got this from. Let's take a look at a couple more pictures and then we'll get into the forensic recreation. So this is a stock photo of the whole mummy and the sarcophagus here which denotes that she's a higher ranking official or nobility of some type and you can see that she's got a gouge in her side here where they say that you know that that was uh where they took the organs out and so on but she was fairly well done and preserved all of that wrapping that stuck to her is stuck to this bitumen and pine tar resin mixture that they used to like paint these bodies with i mean first they go through a beef jerky process just to be straightforward and so they generally darken or mahogany like that and then they paint them with this bitumen and tar type of thing and then of course the first few wrappings you put over that end up fusing into that a lot of times causing this it's one of the only mummies that were found also with their mouth slightly agape one might make the comment that uh that uh opening of the mouth ceremony appeared to work for her So let's actually just go ahead and get into this forensics because what they did was they took the skull and ran it through a CAT scan machine and ended up being able to make a 3D copy of that exactly to, his, to the millimeter, exactly what the skull is without having to actually screw with this thing at all or take all the flesh off of it and leave a skull and try to recreate it or do anything of that nature and recreated what she looked like. We start off here with a perfect recreation of the skull. 
you can easily tell from its features that it's a, a Caucasian, as all Egyptians were. But in this look here, you can almost tell that it's got an overbite slightly on it. And if they gave us a side view, which will probably show up here a little bit, has that well-known Mediterranean type overbite that people had. I've got a little bit of one. So he starts recreating it. And what they basically do is they take little pegs and sticks that are exacting sizes in certain areas because they know general meat density and things along that line. And in doing so, it sets up a parameter for how much that musculature and skin would be on any normal human. And then they work off of that. And then there's a little bit of artistic expression that's in it, but let's look at a few of these pictures. I'm not gonna roll it as a video. I think we could easily Take a look at it here. And this guy here known as Joe Mullins is doing it. He's from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And real good at his job, apparently. And that's kind of a weird job to have, but one that we all know we need. So let's continue here. As he gets it, he puts on musculature and things like that and eyes and eye shape and little pieces and things like that. And it slowly starts to come to fruition what this person would look like. Now, they didn't give him any hint or anything. And they show here that she's got some kind of golden brown streaked eyes that he's used for his depiction just to be ambiguous, just to say, la, la, la. You'll see at the end of this that it's very possible she had some other colors of eyes. And knowing the Egyptians and all of their showings, especially at the earliest dynasties, that would have been before this. So she should have been something around like 8th, ninth, 10th dynasty, somewhere around in that range. If it's 4,000 BC or just shy of it. So, or 4,000 years ago, or 2000 BC, da, da, da. But taking a look at it here, they go through a painstaking recreation here of every little part of it, and it takes a while, and there's a lot of work that goes into it, and what he's only, only what he's trying to do here, you can see all the little pegs sticking out of her cheek and around on her temple and so on, and that's giving a size measurement to where the maximum would be. I mean, you can say she was fat, you was, she was this, she was that, but at the same time, if you gave her a normal, healthy, so on, ba -da -da, they give that picture. And so that's what those pegs are for there. Quarantined off and everything, and you can see he's got a grid working on here and everything else. So it really just comes naturally, pretty much, straight out of what it would look like. But then a lot of hands-on work is done to it to end up getting it to a point that it's just rough. So right now it's got a little bit too much here and there and a little too much on the cheek. The nose is too big, but it's going to be shaped down due to what he knows off the forensics that are working off of it here, the cheek line and so on like that. And after he gets through it, he has to take and make the ears and things like that. And luckily, one of her ears is showing real good up here, so he basically just makes something extremely similar and flips it. Now, this is something that the Egyptians tried to do, too. Here's the roughed in state of it. So, the Egyptians tried to do this same type of thing where they wanted the statue to somewhat resemble the person enough to where his cock could come back to his soul and would recognize itself off the portrait and so on. But after a little while, and we well know now, they actually went to an idea of a Photoshop thing. And that's the reason a lot of these sarcophaguses don't have much variation on a theme. It seems like they're all blended to look somewhat like themselves, but kind of like this exact one person thing. And it does that through males and females and so on too. And we found a few mummies that we realized, man, this this person was quite heavy, 
but all of the depictions that we have of him are looking just like everybody else and nobody's drawn as heavy or anything weird like that. When you do see realistic art, and it's one of the strange things people say whenever they had so much advance early than late, in the earliest of dynasties, they go ahead and showed somebody had a little pudge, had a little of this, had a little of that. Apparently there was no embarrassment to that or whatever. And a lot of scribes and so on are shown with little pudges. Look at Himwenu. He's the architect of the Great Pyramid itself. And you'll see a guy that's got a little double chin and heavy, a little man boobs going on here. He's all the, but of course at that time, they may want to have said this dude was all right, well off. But I don't think that they ever took anybody and fattened them up in pictures whenever they weren't. But that might have gone the other way, of course. Just like in Greek art, where they look like some type of god and everything, and Asclepius was talking to somebody and said, that's just a head. Why? Because, eh, you know, not, not, not quite the same thing. But anyhow, so this is just roughed in. Now we've got the pegs non-exposed. That's it. And now the beauty comes whenever you start drawing in a little bit of cheek lines, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and go from there. So what do you end up with as you start smearing through this and going around working on it over and over again is it slowly comes to life and then he starts to, now he's not going to try to apply hair or things. And to some people that looks odd. To me it kind of does. We're so used to sculptures from the Greek period and all that, having this idea that we go along with it. And he's just sculpting with clay. But you can see him working on the hair here and trying to make sure it's done just about right or whatever. And after he's worked on it a few more days, it really starts to come into fruition. Now, again, there's just a question on the eye color, and I don't want to go crazy on that idea, but I'm sure in my top left corner, I'm showing a few pictures right now of what I'm talking about. And the fact that the Egyptians showed themselves to be blue-eyed people, quite often light-haired too, and I don't think he's going to go for any type of color or anything with this uh, tone that's on it. And if you thought she was a little darker, a little lighter, Quite often when you see these, you'll see some type of ethnicness that they try to throw onto it. And uh, some other forensics have checked him up on this and said, there's no sign for the thing that you're doing here. And what you're actually doing is trying to take somebody in the local place that's currently there now and apply it to them rather than just going off the skull itself and what it shows because quite often it'll show something that's a little more like this and not so, I don't know, ethnic, as you would say. And you can note that the author here is somewhat ethnic, but let's see what he comes up with. You can already see it really coming to shape here and becoming its own little thing. And he's working off of around the nostrils and finishing it off now and making sure it's just about right. And here, all of a sudden, he makes her look 45 years old. And then he goes, no, nah, it's more like 30-something. And tucks it in there. It's just filling in little spots, making sure that there's exactness to it. I think that's amazing what he come up with. And so here's an Egyptian woman that was, well, she had multiple titles. She, it's one of those things where she probably worked in the temple or somebody you think of nowadays, which is real active in the church. But yet she had other roles, and I bet she was a great mom. I really do. So this is a good look at her. You know, sometimes your fantasy mind works on you and somebody made a comment down there too and then coming to life and everything. Could you imagine if we could take her somehow with some special Star Trek thing or whatever and bring her back to life for a while and just take and let her walk around and see things and then put her in front of a TV and start showing her everything or a computer and where we are versus where she was 
and what's still there and that people still revere it to this day. And I wonder what she would think about that, whether she would think that it's great that they revered it or that they turned it into some type of Disneyland type of thing or it all went to ruin instead of the way that it was. And she could tell you about that. Anyhow, I think we'll just go on here. I might show you a couple of more of these that have been done over Egyptian mummies and so on here in the next little bit. Uh, because I think it, it's something that, that shows you and it's neat to take somebody and say, here's the essence of somebody that lived thousands of years ago. They lived here, this and that happened, and on a sarcophagus it tells you all kinds of things. Let me know what you think down below. Peace.